So lads, we're back on the storm beaches again in a storm. I hate weathermen. Maybe they should think about new careers. Yeah. He's going to have some problems. But we're going to give it a lash anyway. So, targets today are flatfish. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, flatfish, yeah. Right? Look at the fishing line. Right? Do you know who did that? The weatherman did that. That's who did that because, yeah, God, you gave them all the information and they screwed it up. So, yeah. So we're fishing in a. Yeah, I don't know what do you call it. Strong wind. And it's going to make life really challenging because it's a side wind. And when it's windy, what you want is clip down rigs. And what clip down rigs don't like is side winds because then they don't unclip. Because when they hit the water, there's already a load of tension on the side of the line and it makes it hard for them to go and clip. But we give them a good shake and we see if we can get them undone. Apart from that, I think it'll be all right for a few fish anyway. So, let's go. The rods are, the Sonics, the reels are, the Megs. The rigs are, as always, well, not always, but most of the time, is the pulley pad and all my own creation. No bling today because, luckily, I didn't put any on because that just made the wind, the whole wind story, so much worse. And for bait, we have frozen lug, frozen squid. That's your lot. We get baited up, we get the second rod out. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe turn the rod sideways so the whole lot doesn't come crashing down onto the ground. I think we might have to do that as well. Yeah. So, uh, sideways fishing. Let's get the second rod in the water. This is a frozen lug. They're the ones from the last session. Because they, were they weren't going to make it till this week, so yeah. Just freeze them up. So I got the rods turned round. There's much less pressure on the tripod if you fish them this way. So the pulley, the pulley pad and also, which is this contraption here. It's just, uh, I came up with this because when I was a young fella, right? I hated, like, crimps and everything else. And I hated it happened to George and I always messed the rig up. So I decided to make a rig that would clip down no matter what length anything was. You know, more, more or less anyway. So you didn't have to measure it. And, and all the baits are down behind the lead weight and everything. Which really helps out with distance and that. So that's why I like it. And it, gets, it extends and allows you to fish a greater area as well. So we got this one lashed out. Yeah, what a crap piece of crap. I hate this weather. Well. Just trying to shake the the clips loose. Because there's not a hope that I'm gonna unclip in this weather. So give them an old choke like that. And they should unclip. I will fish in practically any weather, except the wind. It's the only thing that's really stopping it. And giant waves, but you know, you don't, they kind of come together. You know, rain, not a problem. Freezing cold, not a problem. Wind, you're knackered. This is going to be brutal. You can feel it. For all the new guys, if it's really windy and you're having trouble keeping your tripod up, just turn it into the wind or downwind from it. I don't recommend into the wind, but it's okay, it's better than sideways anyway. But downwind, pushes the rods down into the tripod. Limits, limits broken tackle anyway. It's also good if there's a lot of weed as well. So it doesn't pull the whole shop down. But anyway, well, that's always the case anyway. Stupid days like this, 
you push the wind along the or the wind push the weed along the beach onto your lines piles down the whole lot goes downstream or down tide with the wind and pulls the whole shop over and all your gear is knackered so this kind of prevents that from happening at the least so anyway we're fishing low to high it's a middle tide i think so not expecting too much we're going to take in the lefty and we'll see if we got a fish and we got a fish with fish on yeah it's hell Although there is something on it. Crab is it? What we got? Oh we got a nice flatfish actually. Oh okay, we're staying lads. Nice one. Nice big flounder. You big one too. Yeah. Okay, the rig did on clip. Oh he's a nice one. Please be a place. <laughs> of course there's a flounder though. Okay, well definitely a spare. So Oh, he's a real bruiser. Oh, it is a place. Oh my God. A place. Now it's a flounder, damn it. <laughs> oh, damn. Is it one of these mixes? I think it is. Nah, it's a flounder. Masquerading as a place. Anyway, so you do get mixes that look slightly more like one than the other. So this looks slightly a little bit more like a place, but it is in actual fact a leps. This is called. It's, it's neither nor one or the other. It's a mixture between the two and it confuses people a lot. This is a leps. It's a nice fish though. They eat well. This is quite a big one, so I'd say it's about 35, 38, something like that. Nearly 40, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So. Nearly 40. Not bad. It's going to taste good anyway. So, for the newbers, I fish with circle hooks, right? The circle hooks really only work very well when the bait is below the hook and in order to cast it i came up with this hair here that's it that's just a bait clip so so you can still cast it and the fish the flat fish in particular they, they get this stuff into their face so much easier than they would if that was a, a long shank hook that was about that long so you just come along thump, suck that in hail it down he goes to swim off and the hook sets in the corner of his mouth 97 percent of the time we we'll say sometimes the big hoofers still come along they swallow the whole lot the hook the lot sometimes all the way <laughs> it amazes me with these big flounder what they can get up to a lot of times here i'll get these out these flounder on cod baits like great big ones like with three log worm on it and squid and some mackerel and whatever you know they just eat a lot of it no problem to them and we're always when you're using a bait need loads of tension as well that's your man there then you hook him over the top like that make sure you keep that gate clear on the the top hook the bottom hook doesn't matter it's just a bait clip So I just realized I never ever ever talk about the tripod. So it's an Ian Gold's match rest, super match. Um, it's not original. These cups here, they are original. 
but this bar here i added this so i can fish three rods on occasion i don't often do it but sometimes i do generally i just stick to two but sometimes i'd be so doing something weird with a third rod but this is a rare occasion or for a spinning rod or something like that but sometimes i do sometimes i do swap their heads around they were pointing the wrong direction because the rods are being pulled that way so I switched them over so this is billy fishing right so I suppose I should give some uh, beginners some tips if I was to give anybody one tip to start with when you're fishing not the very day you walk onto the beach, but if you've been fishing for a while, say six months or something, I would seriously start looking into your casting because that can turn a bad day into a good day a lot of the time. When you're fishing in bad weather, being able to cast a long way is really, really, really helpful. For well, one reason is you get out of the bad water here at the edge of the beach which always winds your gear up in the heat pulls your rods over everything else like that also a lot of fish mine is bass and flounder won't be in there especially not on a really bad day and it gets you out into deeper water always which is 90 percent of the time a good thing 90% depending on what you're fishing for of course so really if you can cast you're twice as better off as if you can cast I suppose I mean a lot of my big fish have come at my feet and that's got nothing to do with it a lot of my big fish have come from far out as well that's what I mean so you don't limit yourself casting is not hard it is very easy to learn even a pendulum cast I mean it takes a bit of practice but not much. South African cast is pretty bloody easy and it will get you out of a lot of messes. That's why I like it like today. It'd be very difficult to pendulum cast today. That's my number one tip about beach fishing. Learn how to cast. So it's not such a great day for fishing it seems. The wind's blowing this way really strong. And the tide's pushing this way not very strong. So it's kind of cancels, cancels each other out. So it doesn't seem to be much going on fish-wise, really. What I, what I normally do here is like, pitch the leads out to the left, let them roll around to the right. They find the hollow where the fish is. But I can't do that this time. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, yeah. If I did put common leads on, they'd just be up on the beach now. So I have to fish the grip wires, no matter what I do. So. I'm not, high tide was supposed to be 10 o'clock tonight so I'm not going to stay till then I'm only going to fish half the tide so we won't be it's, it's just getting stronger and stronger the weatherman should be taken out here right shot buried dug up and then shot again and I won't bury him for the second time because this is a disaster so let's take in the left rod Try again. So get him out there again. So the wind is not stopping. So I'm gonna have two more casts, and then I'm gonna clear off and go home. Because, yeah, there's nothing happening here. I'm going to save the bay for another day. That's what I think. So we take in the left rod. We see what's not on it. <laughs> of course, now, I'm into a fish. <laughs> there he comes. Yeah, there he is. Come on, boy. Doing a bit of surfing there. 
What is it? What have we got? Flounder, is it? Yeah. Okay. It's one more for the dinner. Oh, he's a rough one. <laughs> what do you do? Compare him with the other one, which is a mix between the two. See? This one's more place like this one is actually a flounder. This one's a mix between the two. So this is my last cast. It's getting really windy. I don't want to pack up in the dark in the wind. So, so the wind is really starting to pick up now. So that's why he's bouncing around like that. <laughs> right, so. Get this one out. Okay, that went far enough. So it's nearly time to pack up second to last rod, the left rod now I'm going to bring in. Let's see if we've got any more delectables on there. So, let's see if we get another one. It's really nice. That doesn't feel like it anyway. Bit of advice to anybody starting to use multipliers. The last cast of the night, spend the, spend the most attention to the line there, just to make sure the next time you're coming out, you don't make a mess of yourself. Yeah, nothing there. So another thing I do when I'm going home is, apart from throwing shit over the beach, is I, get a, I have a clean cloth in my pocket for when I'm packing up. Let's pick the, the bait off the, the hooks and all the rest of it very well. And I give them a good clean with the cloth before I put them in the, the box again. I don't put them in my rig wallet once I've taken them out. I roll them up and I pin them behind this bar in my tackle box to keep them out of the way so they don't go rusty. And then when I get home, I run them under the sink, under the tap, just to make sure that they're nice and clean and they don't rust. It saves you a lot of money. It saves you a lot of time. Because then when you get to the beach the next time, your rigs are still good. While I pack it up, one rod, the other one's finishing fishing and by the time I'm done with that one, and I'll still do the other one, it's the same thing. So, it's time for the last rod to see what we've got on the end of it. Not that you can tell it's got that one decent. Anyway, so we reel it in. Now, if there's fish, there's fish. That'd be great. And for reasons, we're on our way home. Nah. Look. <laughs> I'm Philly, this is Philly Fishing. I've got wind, I've got fish. Thanks for watching. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.